shop was only like, you know, a quarter of the size of what you have here, and the rest was private house lodges, which was attached. And uh, we bought that subsequently and then enlarged it and then rebuilt it about 12 years ago or so, you know. And was there many candles in Warford at that time? It was, uh, it was down to eight at one stage, um, and there was only eight for many, many decades. Uh, it's only in the last uh, 25, 30 years the numbers have begun to increase. But yeah, like, there was only eight at one point, yeah. And when you came in to Warfare, I mean, that's a fair few years ago, uh, what, I mean, what was the, the general health like in the town? I mean, from a well, y you know, that wasn't a, a, an obvious, it wasn't a talking point or anything else. The, the numbers uh, getting TB had been horrific, but they began to go down quickly in the 1950s, and they came to terms with it. And then, of course, you, all, there was really no uh, much change in medicines between, you know, in the, the, since the beginning of the last century until 1950. Nothing much happened. It was after 1950 that uh, things began to happen and change. And, you know, they've never stopped changing uh, up to this day. In oh. 1950, was that penicillin or what was it? Well, penicillin, yeah, that was one of the, yes, and antibiotics generally uh, became uh, a matter of fact in, in, in uh, around 1950, after 1950, really. Like, it was, some of them had been discovered but hadn't been got to the commercial stage uh, in 1950. But then in the 1950s, they developed greatly and of course it never stopped since yeah. you know and, and you mentioned about the tv being eradicated or near, nearly eradicated as well and i, I know there's been uh, no brown dr Noel brown was, was one of the people that was mentioned in relation to that. yeah well uh, yeah you, you see the places like ard Keen, that was bought uh it was bought in 1946 it was the bromhead's old house and there was 50 acres around it now, uh, I know from Hyde de Rome, it was, it was bought for £10,000. The whole thing, the 50 acres and all, you know. And uh, of course, it was a great buy in that um, uh, it's one of the few hospitals that you have around the country. There's plenty of space around it. I mean, there's hundreds of cars parked in it. I mean, the entire 50 acres is in use, but uh, it was great to have it. You wouldn't get 50 acres so handy to the town uh, anywhere else, you know. And most hospitals, like in other big towns in the, in the region even, have terrific problems with parking, uh, no parking, and, you know. But uh, yeah, like, uh, it was decided it was going to be a TB hospital, and it was built as such. Uh, they were all single-story buildings originally, you, you may remember that, or maybe you don't remember it, but some of them are still, there's a few of the original single-story building is still there, just a few. But the rest has been developed, of course. And that went on then. Uh, TV was kind of whipped in the, I'd say, in the early 50s. And straight away, uh, they really needed it as a county hospital. So it was changed status from a TV hospital to, um, to a general hospital, a general county hospital, and it's still the county hospital, if you like, it's still the the uh, the regular hospital of the day. Now, now the infirmary had been around. It was the only hospital here. If you went back to the nineteen uh, to the early nineteen forties, uh, but it it remained on uh, uh, in a kind of a parallel way, if you like, uh, until it closed in nineteen eighty seven. I mean, would you remember like there was? Famous people associated with the infirmary, like was Dr. White, was it? Well, no, Dr. White would have only had, uh, he wouldn't have had, he, he wouldn't have had great um, connection with the infirmary. Dr. White was a, a general practitioner, really. He had a place down in opposite the Savoy Cinema. Uh, it's not a pharmacy, it, it was Dr. White's 
uh, medical hall as well, he, he, and that's where he practiced down there. Oh, he was a politician, though. He was, but you're going back earlier now. He, he, he was a. Uh, uh, there's a book written on Waterford, uh, the, the, the decade of the centenaries, which was from 1912 to 1923, and 1912 to 1923, uh, and Dr. White figures prominently in that, in that he was an active Sinn Féin uh, politician, you know, from, from 1915, 1912 on, so he would have been an old man. Oh, and you're talking about. Oh, so would this be his son then you're talking about? No, no, he never married. Okay. No, he was a... Uh, uh, no, he, he wasn't... Um, there, there was a Dr. Shipsy here uh, uh, who um, was, was very much involved in the infirmary uh, and um, in, in, in what was the county hospital. Oh, was he one of the Shipsies of the family? Yeah, uh, he'd be Roger's uncle. Okay. Uh, but uh, he, he was a kind of a, a physician and surgeon, and uh, he worked in both the infirmary and the county, the county hospital was uh, St. Patrick's and John's Hill, you know? It's still there, like, but it's now a geriatric home, really, like, you know? Uh, but that, that was there since way back, but present a hospital as such. I mean, it was originally a county home, and it was uh, changed uh, somewhere in the, in, the, in the 1940s, I would think, to become the county hospital. But it, was, uh, it, would be, it wouldn't be of the standard of the, the hospitals we know today. So you had a good location because you were next to the infirmary, next to the... Ah, yeah, well, yeah, that's true, although this was really the edge of the town. I mean, John's Park wasn't there, for instance, and uh, the, uh, the Cork Road uh, houses, they were only built in, in 1949, 48, 49, that period, you know. Uh, so the town ended at the end of Bally Truckle. So we'd have been very much on the edge of town that time, you know. Oh, would you remember the tenements in Watford? Like tenements? No, not really, no. I mean, I know they were in uh, where they were, uh, down around uh, 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 Peter Street and uh, um, that area, but no, no, and there was more than in what's now New Street. That was tenements, they were all knocked down just before my time. I think that that would have happened in the 1940s, you know, the, the demise of those houses. Like, and what know. business would you remember when you first moved into Waterford? They're no longer here now. Well, there was, a, of course, Waterford Crystal opened across the road here in 1951. And uh, they had previously been out, uh, uh, like, Batchik, Charles Batchik, who started Waterford Glass. They started out at the factory beside the dog track in Kilcone uh, in 1947. And they moved in here across the road where Telecom is now in 1951. And they were there until 1972. Now, in, in that period, they bought the land uh, out in Kilbarry. And they moved out there in the summer of 1972. But uh, there was a famous pub across the road here called Canty's, which is gone. It was owned by the Keneally family. Uh, and up the road here, uh, there's a place now, the Mansion House. Do you know it? Yeah. That's closed down. That would have been one of the best and biggest pubs in Waterford uh, at that time. Uh, they also had a wholesale bottling business in there. They bottled stout, the large bottles, you know, the large... Which company was that then? Was Keneally, Keneally Company, company yeah. Oh. Uh, and, you know, like this whole area, all the shops were closed down. There was another uh, shop just beyond the, uh, uh, the mansion house there, uh, Jacobs, Paddy Jacobs. That only closed a year ago. Uh, down the road here, there was Spencer's Dairy. And then just beyond that, there was Powers, which was this small shop to really sold a bit of grocery, a bit of everything. And there was another, there was a Johnstown library. 
down the road another hundred yards here. Oh, is that a bookshop or something? Bookshop, yeah. And then at the end down near the bridge, there was a place called the BBC, which was uh, very fine. Yeah, yeah, kind of a general yeah, sweets and cigarettes and all that, you know. Did someone say there was a, there was a, a blacksmith on Johnstone? There was, yeah, but yeah, you're going back now. Um, uh, was Sullivan's. They were quite famous, really, uh, as blacksmiths, farriers, you know. And, uh, Where were they on the street? Uh, well, they weren't on the street. They were in at the back. Oh, right. Uh, because, you know, uh, you, you, they, they went out to horse breeders and horse trainers and did work on the, on the job, on the farm for them, rather than the bringing in the horse here. They went out to where the horse was, you know. But yeah, they were, they were Peter and Sullivan. They were quite uh, well, but they're gone a long time now. You know, you're, 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 you're reaching back. Like, uh, and I do remember them, of course, knew them all quite well. They used to come in here. Um, you know, uh, and around the city centre, what businesses can you remember? Like, you know, like, that are, like, I mean, obviously, there's places like Chapman's that were well known. Well, Chapman's, of course, was an outstanding uh, grocery uh, in the town, just down beside the, the Granville Hotel. The Granville Hotel was a pretty shook up hotel, it wasn't much that time. That has been improved out of all knowledge. I mean, it's, it's now a lovely hotel, uh, but it was not in that class, like, uh, because Hearns, you see, were there. There was a big, a big business, Hearns, which would be on the scale of Shaw's. And the, bus the, the premises that was Hearns has been largely taken over by the Granville Hotel, uh, which was a much smaller hotel then. And then another part of it, it's been developed into a shopping centre uh, and the exit onto George's Street is now part of a shopping centre, all of which was part of Hearns uh, originally. Hearns was the one with the famous... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, like, I, I, I only vaguely remember that, to be honest with you. You put the money in the thing and you pulled a st string and it went off. And somebody said an office was open at least all day. Counting the money? Well, it, you see, there was no tills as such. Uh, Just drawers. Yeah, but, but that was... That was that was quite the. I mean, I, I do remember in, in, when I went to Dublin myself, in Cleary's, which is in the news recently, they had that still going in the 1950s, in the late into the 1960s, where you, you know, you put took down this thing, uh, put the money and the docket into it, and pulled the chain that went off to a, a central uh, till, if you like, and there were three or four or five. Girls inside who gave all day taking out the thing and putting in the change and sending it back, you know. So that was before the uh, automatic tills came along, like you know. So, different yeah, times. Different times, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with that too, I mean, people mentioned to us things like even CIE delivering with a with horse and carrot and something like that. Oh, yeah, well, that was that was indeed, I remember that quite clearly. I mean, uh, there, there, there was a uh, there was a um, a drinking trough for horses, right, just up the road there in Johnstown. Two doors, two doors up from here. Like number beside here is 41 Johnstown, 42 and 43, and outside 42 there was a horse drinking trough, which was put up by horse lovers, sort of around 1900 maybe, and way back. But this was done in lots of places around the country to make sure that horses wouldn't be left thirsty, you know. Dehydrated. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, there was a lovely one there, actually. But Now, there's a bit of a garden thing there, you know what I'm saying? Outside the door, if you look at it. Now, it's being, in the process of being reset at the moment. They cleared the whole thing about a week ago, and they put in flowers and all that kind of stuff, which will be there in a month's time, you know? So, I wonder, I mean, just go back to the infirmary and all that kind of stuff in the house. I mean, what are health differences would you see now to back then? You say for babies or mothers or whatever. Well, I have, say, the, the, the HSE have a place now out on the Cork Road there uh, where all these injections for uh, babies is done as matter of, you know, get the notes, mothers get notes, you know, have this thing done, the word for the jabs, like, and all that. That's, uh, but now, 
there are a whole lot of, there were, there were few enough doctors in Waterford uh, in, the, uh, in the 50s, you know. Uh, the place has, has increased as a medical center enormously uh, uh, since that time. I mean, there are a lot of doctors here now, a lot of big practices. And, uh, you know, doctors have become a central part of life, like uh, an attending doctors is uh, all families do, you know. Uh, you go to the doctor now for you know, minor reasons enough. I mean, there were people who went on for 30 years and never saw a doctor, you know. It's changed completely, like, you know. I wonder, I mean, I remember hearing stories too about, it, like, there was more of an interest. In it. You know what I mean? Like your man on Barry Street, he was called him now. He was a bit of a herbalist. Uh, or he, he was gone now, before my time. I, I know... Was there elements of that still around where people would... Well, well, no, there wasn't really, no, but, but there were different pharmacies uh, had, had uh, sort of special cough bottles that only themselves knew the formula of. Their own blend. Yeah, yeah, but that was, uh, that was, that was really uh, something of the 40s. It kind of died out in the 50s and it became general, you know. It, uh, so, yeah. It, that, that, that end of it had, had begun to change, all right. Like and, Tom uh, Harris whiskey. Oh, indeed, yes, <laughs> uh, yeah, something the same, yeah. Well, he lasted a long time, you know, down there. Uh, I believe he was a very old man, but yeah, that was, that was the way it was, you know. Yeah. Well, now, Ballybricken uh, was unusual at that time. In that they used to have a fair in the square in Ballybricken. And, uh, the, the cows in particular, you know, they were actually on the street and up on the footpath. And, you know, it was even known that they occasionally ran into a shop, like, you know, the, a loose bullock, you know. But that, that was there until, uh, I don't know what year, but sometime, I would say, in the, uh, in the early 60s, they decided to build a, 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 what would you call it, a kind of a, a special uh, 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 place. It was done out on the, on the, uh, the road to Kilmeden. Yes. They had a, oh, I forgot a, play, a, a sales pitch for cows and cattle, and that was shifted out of Ballybricken. And then they put in, the, well, the bull post is there as a historical yeah. thing, and they put in flowers and changed the roads and all that. But that's quite, uh, you probably don't remember it any other way, only the way it is today. But, uh, it, they made a nice, lovely area out of it now, whereas it used to fairs there uh, at least every month. And uh, it's hard to believe it now that cows were allowed to, you know, uh, just uh, stand there all day. And uh, there were, there were, they had marts, the marts, that's what I mean. The marts came in, I think, in the late 50s, early, six, early 60s, I'd say. Yeah. And would you, when you first came to Waterford, would you remember, we say, the kind of the social scene? What was it like in Waterford? Like, would people go to see shows? Or would they go to the cinema? What was the kind well, of Well, the Theatre Royal was, was quite active at that time, you know. And uh, then at one stage, the Theatre Royal uh, changed to a cinema, but there was the Savoy Cinema. It was in full swing, and there was another one, the Regal Cinema, up in, in the Glen. And then uh, there was another one, the Coliseum. And they were all very, uh, the cinemas were more active in the 50s than they are now. Okay. I mean, what, would, what kind of things in the Theatre Royal would you go to? Or would you... Well, they, they, were, they were great at uh, light opera, of course. They, they had a lot. There was a light opera, uh, there was an opera committee here in town. And um, they would have um, uh, operas and plays of all description. There was a... Uh, there were at least two uh, uh, play groups in Waterford uh, uh, at that time, very active, and there was no period when there wasn't plays put on, and they were very good at it. But the cinema was also very, you see, really before television, they were in their heyday. Because, but once television, television kind of changed everything, you know. Uh, uh, what about... Um uh, sports, like I mean, Waterford. I mean, had a funny thing between soccer and. Well, it was it was a soccer town, really. Uh, uh, it seemed to have the grip of it, and 
uh, there was they had a very good soccer team here back in the 60s, uh, the Blues, and they did extremely well for um, for a number of years. They they were kind of a they were the premier team really uh, outside of Dublin uh, for de for a decade or two decades maybe like, but uh, that changed and then as you know the the the, the soccer was played in out in Kilcoan Park, which was also the uh, racetrack. It still is, of course, the racetrack. It was in the, in the centre of that was the uh, where the soccer was played. And then in the latter decades, they got the uh, the regional uh, track outside on the on the off the Cork Road. But uh, you know, uh, soccer was the game. There's no doubt about that. But then there was a there was an element of GA in it as well, in that they had uh, a few uh, prominent clubs, as you know, well, Mount Sion was there, uh, and Ballygunner, of course, and then um, Erin's Own. Uh, Erin's Own had a pitch out in, still have it in uh, Polbury, but then there's two soccer pitches in Polbury as well. Uh, amazing, three soccer pitches right in the centre of the city, really, you know? They're still there. And what about the band? I mean, what was, what's, did I come? Uh, the band, I don't think, I never heard of it as being a, a big thing in Waterford. The band was never introduced as um, dramatically as people seem to remember, or it was an occasional thing. It was quite occasionally heard of somebody after being uh, named and caught for being at a soccer match. I mean, but that's gone, that's gone, I think, since. I think since 1971, and that's that's 44 years ago. So you're you're going back really in time now. It was there, but it it wasn't uh, it wasn't uh, it seems to me as big a problem as it was represented to be. You know. What about the whole thing about what for people seem to think it seemed to be quite common for talking people to go back and forth to England to work like there was. A, Great movement of people back and forth to England. Well, I would say the only going to England was because there was unemployment here. I mean, trust they weren't going to England at that time out of choice. No, I know, yeah. They were going because they couldn't get a job here or whatever. And indeed, it, it was not unknown for uh, people who committed crimes, for instance, and uh, mi you know, modest, cri mi minor crimes, if you like. Uh, it was not unusual in court. To be told, well, I let you off. Why did you go to England? You know, which which uh, sounds a bit ridiculous now, but it did happen, and it was quite common in in, in district courts. That's funny. Uh, yeah, the the uh, you were let off. Why did you go to England? You know, in other words, you get rid of the problem, like you know. Yeah, one way to save the jail. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Um, yeah, and, and I suppose. People, uh, the work situation of Waterford, I mean, you mentioned the glass factory, I mean, obviously you have other ones too, like, uh, like the, we said the jute factory. Uh, the ah, yeah, they're old, yeah, they're, yeah. The meat factories. Yeah, they were terrific, they were all, uh, well, the meat factories in the 1950s, they were still going strong. It's always the jute factory. Uh, and then Waterford Crystal had become, uh, like, uh, in, 19, in 1950, 1951, 52, there would have been maybe 400 in Waterford Glass. And the numbers didn't really begin to uh, jump until much later in that decade. But by the time they moved to Kilbarry, there would have been much greater numbers. And there was eventually, you know, over 2,000 working in, in Waterford Crystal Lake. They, they really were the backbone of employment in the, in the, whole, in the, whole, in the whole area, you know. But, you know, it would have been fairly a blue-collar town in the sense of yeah, 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 absolutely, and it has been described as such in various journals, you know, like you know, and it would have been true also. It was a, a kind of a strong trade union uh, uh, history here, you know, going back to the to the time of of the of the of the early part of the century, you know, the, the going back to the, the time of Redmond and. Dr. White and the Sinn Féin, there would have been a strong, uh, strong centre for trade unionism, yeah.
Yeah. And what about the, the port and the, the ships and all that? I mean, it was a very busy port, wasn't it? It was, and uh, then unfortunately there was a major strike which went on for 10 years. Uh, and that did a lot of damage, really. Uh, and during that time, then, they were planning how they could... This was the movement uh, until containers came in. And containers are only in, well, I don't know, like maybe 40 years. Uh, before that, uh, stuff, uh, merchandise came in, had to be handled, taken off, or tied up on pulleys and taken out. It was a very laborious scene. So there were dockers were, uh, uh, there were some hundreds of dockers. Uh, and then of course, when, uh, when they began to use containers, there wasn't the same need for dockers. And then at a later stage again, they decided to build a new container port down in, uh, uh, across the river, it's down. So, uh, uh, opposite Bell Ferry, yeah, that, that's a whole new development, and that's moved down river a few miles. So it's it's different altogether. The keys now are back to like any other city. They, they don't have, uh, they, they're just, uh, they, they're, there's very few uh, boats of any reason to call in here anymore. Uh, the cruise liners now come in occasionally, as you know. But uh, the, the, there's, I don't think there's any commercial shipping coming into Waterford anyways. It only comes as far as Bellevue. That's the name of the, the place down the river, you know? And, and um, uh, what, what age were you personally looking for? Lots of us came over. Well, I came down here when I was 17 after doing my leaving cert, and I was an apprentice uh, to my sister, who had opened in 1950. But then I had to go to Dublin you go to college pharmacy from 1955 to 58, and I came back here in 58 as soon as I was qualified. Took it over from where she got married, and I'm here since. And did you, I mean, you were, were you from a rural part? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Or was Can, that strange coming into town? Well, no, because, I mean, I'd been away at school, and, uh, uh, well, you know, you were going to school in the town. I went to school in Thurless for a while. And then I finished up going to Ross Gray. But so, you know, it wasn't strange, no. I mean, that you took it in your stride, you know. You weren't scared of the townies or not? Not really, no. And, uh, you know, I went into a digs as, as used to be done at that time, you know. Uh, and uh, there was maybe 12 in the digs, mixture of men, women, and, you know, we all became great friends and started playing golf together. and. You know, there was. I played golf at the time. I was 17, and it was a, it was a great get out. Like I mean, it got you into playing with a whole lot of other people in Waterford Golf Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. When was that called, Waterford Golf Club? Oh, Waterford Golf Club since 1912. All right, because it's a fantastic location. It is, yeah, unique in in Ireland. Uh, I don't know if you're in it in recent times, but. Uh, if you're there now, you're, on any day like today, you're actually looking down on the town. Uh, all, all, now there's, a, there's a whole complete glass front. Uh, and at night time, uh, you're looking down on the lights, and there's never any curtains put into it, because it, you're far enough away that nobody can see, you know what I mean? You're, you're it's just, like the old Lord Dream, really. The, yes, the view over water exactly. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's well, it, it is sort of the same view as the Ardry had. Not quite as open as that, but nearly. You know, it's it's uh, you see an awful lot from it. You know, it's it's, uh, it's a lovely place, but uh, doing well too. Do you remember there since you were seventeen? Oh, I have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have, uh, actually, uh, there's there's only one other guy and myself that I remember since 1951. Uh, another man called Dick Phelan, who was a teacher in the in the tech and in the regional college. And he's now 90, and we're the only two. We're the only two uh, active members from the 1950s. And has your handicap improved? No, well, it, it improved and, and, and it's, it's, it's gone up. You know, <laughs> once you pass a certain age, it kind of it uh, goes up. You know, you, you begin to uh, be not as good as you were. You know, and each time that happens, you, another shot goes on. You know, so but it's 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 fine. It's still a place of great 
entertainment and pleasure, you know. And it's, and, and it's no longer a male. Uh, oh no, it was never. Uh, it was never a male. Never a male no, 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 no. That's that's unusual. Okay. Uh, what you were saying now. There'd yes. be only a few clubs in Ireland, okay. uh, like Port Marnock is the obvious one uh, that you hear of. Um, uh, that's the only <coughs> club in the Republic of Ireland now that's male only. So was Warford then always men women? Oh yeah, oh, from the very beginning. Oh. And it was set up in 1912, which okay. is, we had our centenary there three years ago. So, uh, yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah. And um, anything else that I mean, just obviously try and think back to that time, because we were going back a long time, but is there anything else that comes to mind as regards how water has changed? Or? Well, I mean, I, I, I can't elaborate much on that for you. I mean, everything has improved. I mean, services have improved, like medical services obviously have improved. Uh, you know, uh, libraries uh, have, have been set up and extended. I mean, the road, uh, the ring roads and that, are a huge improvement. I mean, the the folly outside was a kind of a boreen. You know, the, that's the main, that's the inner ring road now. You know, that was literally a, a boreen. Uh, you know, I mean, the, 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 things have been jollied up, like, and because uh, uh, a great deal of houses have been built. Uh, and that's this way to your power seat, isn't it? Yeah, <coughs> on the Dunmore Road, yeah. Well, that was, um, that, the, the, there was nothing but land uh, uh, for agricultural use or whatever on the Dunmore Road from Power Seeds on. But I mean, all that's been taken over for housing now, you know. Uh, and uh, I mean, Viewmount, which is the biggest estate out that way, that was only bought over in in, uh, in, in the 1960s. Like the, the Healy family lived in Viewmount uh, until uh, around 19. 64, I think, 65, and uh, that was bought at that stage and developed it. There's a very fine lot of houses out there, and there's uh, Viewmount, Powers Court, uh, and, um, uh, you know, Collins Town Avenue. Yeah. So it's, all the countryside. Uh, it's, it's, all, it's all built up now. That was all countryside uh, at that time. Uh, but that is the biggest change that's happened, of course. The, uh, the, the, the parish of Benildis is now the biggest parish in the diocese. There's over 16,000 in the parish. And that was all just green land, like from... It's hard to believe. It is, yeah, from, you know, from, uh, from, from out the place I'm talking about, you know, Viewmount, Paris Court, they're all new. Uh, and uh, down towards the river, uh, down to you know, that, that, was all, that was all just ordinary land. But um, yeah, that's the that's the biggest change, I suppose, in the shape of the town. Yeah. Well, listen, Paris, thanks a million for giving us your time. That's all. I hope you get something out of it. Yeah.